of everything in vectors that you need to know for CXC right around the corner. All right, so this right here, it says, in the diagram above drawn is a vector OA. This means vector OA. OA and OB are position vectors such that OA equal A and OB equal B, right? Vector OA and vector OB in, they want it in column vector form. So now what you have to look at is, in order to find out what is vector OA, you look at the position where A is on the graph. This is the point where A is, all right? A is at, if you were to write the coordinates of A, it is five, X coordinate is five, and Y coordinate is nine. Now, of course, when you're writing vector O in vector form, then what you're gonna write is OA, they put a little vector above it and they write OA equal in vector form, put the X up here, so five, and the Y here, so nine. Now we're gonna do the same for OB, we look where Vector B is, vector B, the point B is from the origin O to B here. This have coordinates eight, four. So what we do is write that vector OB is equal to eight, four. And that's vector OB. All right, nice. Now this part now says a point P not shown not shown is such that OP is a half B plus A. So a half of B plus A is vector OP, right? Vector OP in XY form. So vector OP, it's equal to a half of B. A half of B is a half of 8, 4. So it's a half of this vector 8, 4 plus vector OA. So when you work out a half of 8, 4, plus OA, what you're going to have to do is you work out a half of eight, a half of eight is four, and then you add four to five. When you add four to five, you're going to get nine, and then you work out a half of four, which is two, then you add two to nine, and you get 11. So that is vector OP, which is a half B plus A. So if you were to put P on the graph, 9, 11, well, where is 11? Um, we don't have this spot for put 11 on the graph, so we can't. We just know that 9, 11, the X value, what are they? Here, so the Y value, there's somewhere out there, so 9, 11. I think right here, so can go 10. Now we can say probably 11 is about there, so. Right, and then they want the angle. Then they want the angle. Right, is the angle OP makes with the positive x axis. This is the angle that OP would have made with the positive x axis. So, here we're gonna have to do a little bit of trigonometry. If this right here is when, what, when the y value is 11 and this have an x value of 9, to find the angle, you're just gonna have to take tan inverse. The angle OP makes with the positive x-axis. Let's do that part up here. So I'm gonna write part D. We're gonna say that the angle it makes with the x-axis is tan inverse of the opposite. The opposite is always the angle, the, the, the side that is perpendicular to the angle or the side across from the angle that is this length right here, this side, if you form a right angle triangle, this side right here would be the opposite, yeah? So the opposite is 11. So it would be tan inverse, the opposite 11 over the adjacent, adjacent is the side below it, adjacent is nine. So it's tan inverse of 11 over nine. If you work out tan inverse of 11 over nine, we put that in our calculator, tan inverse 11, over nine, that give you 50.7.
So that's 50.7 degrees. 50.7 degrees. That's the angle that OP makes with a positive x axis, 50.7 degrees. Then it says, what is the magnitude of OP? To find the magnitude of OP, this is what we do. The magnitude of OP is equal to, it's the square root of the x component square plus the y component square. So it's gonna be the square root of nine square plus 11 square. So you work that out in a calculator again. 11 square plus nine square. When we do that, we'll get square root of 202, which is 14.2. So in this case, we get 14.2 to be the magnitude of OP. All right, that means that the length of the line OP is 14.2. So remember, it's the x component squared. This distance is nine. So say the x component squared plus y component squared give you the magnitude of OP. Now, what I like to do, of course, is verify everything on a graph. I'm going to verify it on a graph for you. And this graph is known as the geometer sketch pad. So this is a geometer sketch pad right here. And luckily for us, we can go to graph and I'm gonna to go to rectangular grid and I'm gonna plot the point P. I want to insert a point. And P is the point when the X value was nine and the Y value was 11. So I plot that point, all right, so you won't see it here, but see P there. This is the point P. We're going to label it as P. Now that we label it as P, now look at this. If I were to draw a line from here to P, now we have the vector OP. Now this, this is the vector now OP. All right? Now, what we just found was that the, the length of OP we found that the length of this was 14.21. Let's verify it. So what I'm gonna do is go to measure length. Oh my God, look at that, 14.21. When we did our question, what did we get for the length? 14.21. Now we got that the angle it made with a positive X was 50.7 degrees. Let's check it out on the graph right here. So now we want to find the angle so what I'm gonna do is draw the positive x-axis. This is the positive x-axis. And I'm gonna measure the angle between it now. So the angle between OP and the positive x-axis. So I go to measure angle, 50.7. It's a 50.71 we'll get, see it there? 50.7 is that angle, 50.7. All right, nice. So this is our answer, all right? All right? Nice, so that's just for verification that we say 50.7 is right. Now here what they say now, they say given that vector AB is five four and vector CD is six X, and they say, what is the value of X such that the magnitude of AB is equal to the magnitude of CD? Now, if two of their magnitude are equal, then what we do know then is that the square root this is the magnitude of AB, the square root of five square plus four square, that must be equal to the square root of six square plus X square. That's the only way that their magnitudes are going to be equal. So if we square both sides to get rid of the square root, what that means is that this becomes five square is 25, just to be safe, I'm actually gonna put in a calculator, five square plus four square, that is 41. So that would mean that this, that would mean that 41 is equal to, let me not let it disappear. 41 is equal to six square is 36. 
plus x square and you might say but but sir what happened to the square root what we do is square both sides to throw away the square root we squared both sides you can do that so if 41 is equal to 36 plus x square that would mean that x square of equal 5 yeah x square of equal 5 because 36 plus 5 is 41 so if x squared is equal to 5 then what is the values of x? The values of x can be x is equal to the square root, positive square root of five, that's the positive square root of five, or x can be equal to the negative square root of five. All right? So to write cd as a vector, cd is six, root five. Remember that root five is really 2.23. All right? Now I'm gonna show you that it makes sense. Um, a, B, 5, 4, if I were to just put 5, 4 on a graph, right? So let me clear this graph away. I'm just gonna clear everything. If I were to plot five, four on a graph, this is five, insert the point, five, four. If I plot five, four, and then I plot the point um, root five, six root five, look what happened, six, root five root five is really five raised to the half power that's really root five so if i plot that point i'm going to measure both of them and also I, we can plot six minus root five So that's five raised to the half power and it's a negative of that. So see there now what I'm gonna do is measure all of them. So this right here, so is let's say this is AB, which is five, four, right? I'm gonna measure the length of that line. See it there, 6.40. If I measure this line now, six from the origin to here, if we measure this line, this was the one with root five, six, root five, which is right here. If we measure this line as well, need a length, measure length. It's not allowing me the length. Why not? Let's go again. If we want to measure this length, 6.4 again, yeah, man. And if we want to measure the last one, yeah, measure length 6.4 see it all of them are 6.4 why because we ensure to set their lengths formula equal to each other to find the value of x so nice now it says what is the value of x if a b is parallel to c d if a b is if a b is parallel to c d that means that a B is going in, CD is actually going in the direction of AB, all right? So if we were to go here, if they're going in the same direction now, AB, um, I'm gonna work it out right here, all right? Instead of around there. So remember, vector AB is equal to five, four, and it is parallel to vector CD parallel to vector CD and vector CD is equal to 6x. Now if two vectors are parallel, then one is a multiple of the next. So in that case, that means that AB, AB, since AB is parallel to CD, this is how we know, AB is equal to some constant times vector CD, yeah man, in order to make them parallel, all right? So this would give you what it is. 
So all we need to do now is just set 5 squared equal to 6x. It don't really matter what k is. You could put k as 1, k as 2, k as 3. It don't really matter. We just want to know it's some constant times vector cd. So in this example, we're going to set 5, 4 equal to some constant k times 6x. And then we're going to work out what the constant is. In this case now, pretty much what we're saying then is that 5 is equal to 6 times k. And if 5 is equal to 6 times k, we can divide both sides by 6. And so that means a k is equal to 5 over 6. k is equal to 5 over 6. That means we'll multiply 5. We actually multiply 5 by... So k is 5 over 6. So that means the 5 over 6 times x is 4. So 4 is equal to the k, which is 5 over 6 times x. When you cross multiply, you get 24 is equal to 5x. And so we divide both sides by 5. And so x is going to equal to 24 over 5. So in this case, we'll end up getting that x is 4.8. That's the answer, x is 4.8. All right, that's when they're parallel. One is a multiple of the next. So in this case, the value of x would be 4.8. All right, now, of course, you know our style already, we like to verify everything. So what I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna go back, not to the whiteboard, that's A mistake. We're going to go back to this graph right here and I'm going to clear away this working. We get 4.8. I'm going to clear this and go to a new graph and I'm going to plot AB. I'm going to plot AB, which is 5, 4. So we go to plot points, AB is 5, 4. And I'm going to plot also 6, 4.8. And we're going to see if both of them are parallel. So look at this now. This is vector AB, right? That's vector AB. And this is vector CD. In a weird sense, this is vector CD from here to here. Of course, two of them, the parallel, you can't see it. It's just that them, see that them line are straight line. Well, it shouldn't be like this, but it just want to show you, say, see that this vector from here, so to here, so clearly parallel to the vector from here, so to here, so yeah, man. So that would be vector X for them to be parallel. All right. This is not the perfect diagrammatical representation of what's happening because a and B are not starting from the origin, right? But this is this is just showing vectors that are parallel. So that would be X right there, 4.8. All right, all left have to remember is that when two vectors are parallel, one is a multiple of the next. All right. Moving along. Now this question says, ABC is a triangle. It tells us say, the coordinates of A, B, and C are given to be two, two, six, two, four, six. And it says, we need to write the position vectors A, B, and C in the vector form. That part is relatively easy. First thing you have to do is write OA is equal to, put a vector on top of OA, Right down say OA is 2, 2. Then you have to tell them what is vector OB. Vector OB, you have to tell them vector OB is. All right, now here's going to get a little bit messy. So my apologies for this, but I'm just going to take this one to the whiteboard just so it's not so messy. All right, I'm going to write down each.
So I'm just taking it to the whiteboard so it is not so messy. All right, this will make it so messy. So now again, we need to write down what is vector OA. Vector OA is going to be equal to, right here, so it's 2, 2. That's vector OA. Vector OB, all right, let me try to write this out better. Vector OB is going to be equal to, as I can see, this is 6, 2. And then vector OC is 4, 6. So let's write vector OC is equal to 4, 6. That's all we do so far. I want to really do not yet. All right, nice. So the next thing now is it says, Write in vector form A, B, and A, C. Write in vector form A, B, and A, C. So now we have to remember to find vector A, B. It's vector of the last minus vector of the first. Let me say that slow again. Vector A, B is O times the last, O, B, minus O times the first. What is O? O is just from the origin. So... You have OB, which is 6, 2, 6, 2, and then you subtract OA, OA is 2, 2. So now when you work it out, you're going to get 4, and 2 minus 2 is 0. So that is AB. Next thing they want is vector AC. All right, so now we need to find vector AC. Vector AC is vector of the last minus vector of the first. So vector AC is OC minus OA. Yeah, man, that's vector AC. So vector AC gonna be equal to OC, which is four, six, minus vector OA, and vector OA is two, two. Yeah, man. So, four. Did I do O? Did I do O, B, right? Just one check. Six, two. Minus two, two. Yeah. Just want to make sure I do everything right. Four minus two is two. And then six minus two is four. So, that's vector AC. All right. So, that's vector AC. This is vector AB. And this is vector AC. Nice. All right. Now let's see what next they wanted. So do this part, we'll find A, B, and A, C. It says show that A, B, C is isosceles. So to show that a triangle is isosceles, pretty much what you need to do is, remember this is an isosceles triangle. Two sides are equal. If you have an isosceles triangle, usually what you see is like one line like this, or one line like this. And then this angle here, so if this is A, then this angle over here, so for the A too. So them two sides are for equal. So now in order to show that this is a isosceles triangle using vectors, we need to actually, let's look at what is happening. All right, so look at this now. So we're going to do a rough sketch of this. So if you were to draw like an X and Y axis, O A is 2, 2. Let's say this is O A, 2, 2 right here so ob is 6 2 6 2 somewhere over here so 6 2 this is b and then you have oc is 4 6 in between so this is a 4 and then you have 6 up here so all right so what we need to show is that the length from a to c is supposed to be the same as the length from b to c that's if they're isosceles. This side supposed to equal this side. Remember, this is A, this is B, and this is C. So if an isosceles triangle, AC equal BC. So can we do that now? We need to show them that now. So already have AC all the way. So we just need to find vector BC. Now if we find vector BC, vector BC is OC minus OA. Now, if you work out OC, 
Why did I say OC? OC minus OB, OB. Vector of the last minus vector of the first. So if you work out OC, OC is four, six. And then you subtract vector OB, vector OB is six, two. Four minus six is negative two. And then six minus two is four. So then now if we stay so books, I work out the length of BC. So the length of BC is going to be equal to the square root of the X component square, that's negative two square, plus the Y component square, which is four square. So when you work it out now, what you get is negative two square is four, four plus 60, 16, that's 20. So vector BC is the square root of 20. Now, if you work out the length of vector AC right here, so you're gonna realize that so what you're gonna get is two square, which is four plus four square, which is 16. And then when you square root it, you get 20. Now, since vector AC is equal to vector BC, therefore it's isosceles. That's what you're going to tell them. So in words right here, so we are going to say since, we're gonna say since AC equal BC, then I can tell them hence ABC is isosceles. That's the reason, since AC is equal to BC, then of course, ABC is isosceles. Now, of course, you know our style already. We love to put everything graphically. And since we love to put everything graphically, I'm going to open the graph and show you what I want. So let's go to the graph again right here. So, so now we'll stay so. So go to the graph again, I will stay so. All right, and we're going to plot the points then. Remember, say A is 2, 2. A is 2, 2. I just want to look back at the question. A is 2, 2. B is 6, 2. C is 4, 6. So come and plot the points then now. A is 2, 2. two. 2, 2, plot, B is 2, 6, or was it it's 6, 2, sorry, 6, 2, and then C is 4, 6. Now we're done. All right. So I can label them now. This one is A. This one is B. label that point as B, and this one is C. So if I were to stay so now and draw the line from A to B, A to B, draw the line from B to C, draw the line from C to A, I'm gonna measure that line AC. AC is 4.47. Yeah, man, memorize that in AC is 4.47. Now look at this, if I were to measure the length of the line BC, I'm gonna get the same thing, 4.47. So therefore, clearly this is an isosceles triangle since this side equal this side. That's why it's isosceles. So that's how you use a vector method to show that the triangle is isosceles. All right, they're isosceles. All right, now question three, this one says, OA and OB are two position vectors relative to the origin. Given that OA is three, one, and B is minus one, one, write OA and OB as column vectors. We have enough space to do that. All you have to do is write down that OA is, put it in vector form. In vector form, it is three, one. And then this right here now, vector OB is equal to minus one, minus two. And that's vector OB, all right? 
Now this one wants us to find vector AB. Now vector AB, remember it's vector of the last minus vector of the first. So it's going to be OB, which is minus one, minus two, minus OA, which is three, one. So when you subtract them now, you have minus one, minus three, that's minus four. Then you have minus two, minus one, which is minus three. That's vector A, B, all right? And I want the magnitude of A, B. To find the magnitude of A, B, remember this is how we write magnitude, this symbol with a slash right here. The magnitude of A, B is equal to the square root of a square, which is negative four square, negative four square plus negative three square. So when you work that out, we we'll end up getting five. That's the length of vector AB five. Now, maths is not a spectator subject. So while you are watching this video, I highly recommend that you're doing the question as we're working through it together. All right, do the questions as we're doing it together. More maths equal better maths. The more you practice, the better you get at it. So this is vector AB, and this is the length of AB. Just for verification, you know, that's our thing. This is the last time we're gonna be verifying. So let's clear this. All right, and that is vector A is three, one. So plot three, one, I'm just gonna do it rough sketch. One, two, three, and one would be right here. This is vector A. Uh, I don't get it spot on, but that can work with. All right, that's vector A. And then you have B, which is minus, minus, minus one, minus two, I think. Vector OB is minus one, minus two. Minus one, minus two is somewhere down here, so. Probably right here, so. I'm trying to get it spot on. You know, perfectly in the center, but we can work with it. Yeah, and I'm label it. Then look at this now, we can draw the line from A to B. Then we can measure that line. 5.02 can never get it spot on. The length of AB is five. As you can see, just like we'll get five. That's the length, all right, see there, five. So that's it, that's the last one for verifying, just to show you that all the calculations we're doing is correct. Now question five says, Vector x, vector y, and vector r are such that x is 1a, y is b minus 2, r is 2a. Calculate 3x plus 2y. So 3x plus 2y is 3 times the vector x, 1a, plus, then it's going to be 2 times y, 2 times b minus 2. So what you're going to do, remember, you always add the x components and y components. So it's three times one is three plus two times b. That's gonna be three plus two times b. Then you're gonna go three times a is three. So that's three a plus two times minus two is minus four. So that's three a minus four. Now listen what them tell we know. Them tell we say this vector right here so is equal to vector r. If this vector is equal to vector r, 3x plus 2y, which we'll find, I will find that this is just 3 plus 2b. This is 3 plus 2b. And this one right here, so is 3a minus 4. Then basically I tell us it equal to vector r. But what are vector r? Vector r 2, 8 vector r 2 8 so if it equal to vector 2 8 then we can literally tell them so that means a 3 plus 2 b equal to 3 plus 2 b 
equal to so then now that will allow us to find what is b so we can subtract three from both sides to get two b i think i want to write it a little bit smaller just to have more space i'm just going to write them a little smaller so right here so we can tell them that three plus two b equal two so that means say uh, two b equal negative one and so b equal negative a half. Then the next line till we say three a minus four equal eight. Three a minus four equal eight. So that means a uh, three a equal twelve, and so that means uh, a equal. We divide both sides by three a equal four. So that gives with a value for a and b. a of four, you can tell them say a is four. And you can tell them say b is negative a half. All right, nice. Now this one say calculate the length of a, b. This is easy. Then give a vector a, b. So we know that the length of vector a, b is going to be the square root of a square which is negative three square, negative three square plus four square. When you work that out, all you do is just pump that into your calculator, right? And you're gonna get five. Just to show that that is five minus three square plus that is four square. When you pump that into the calculator, you get five. So see, they will end up get five. This equal five. Now, next thing it says now is if the magnitude of EF is equal to three times vector AB, show that E is 10 root two. So the magnitude of EF, remember the magnitude of EF. So if I were to write it, I'm gonna go to the whiteboard, all right? So just to bear in mind, vector EF, they give us that vector EF is equal to, just to write it down, vector EF is 5E. Now, since vector EF is 5E, 5E, and then them tell we say the magnitude of EF is equal to something like three times the magnitude of AB. But we already find the magnitude of AB. The magnitude of AB is five. So five times three, three times five. Then basically I tell us that equal to the square root of EF, but EF is five square plus E square. So I'll stay somewhere this out. Now we're gonna get that the square root of 25 plus e square is equal to three times five, which is 15. Now we're trying to get rid of this square root, so we we'll square both sides. So I'm gonna write that line, you square both sides. Now when you square both sides, what's gonna happen is that the square cancel the square root. Yeah man, square cancel square root. So what you're gonna get if I were to write it out is 25 plus e square being square rooted. We'll square this side, we'll square it, and that's gonna be equal to 15 square. By squaring both sides, this square cancel the square root. Say so left back with 25 plus e square is equal to 15 square, which is 225. Then you can subtract 25 from both sides to get e square is equal to 225 minus 25 is 200. So to work out on But if you have a stay so I'm putting a calculator, what is the square root of 200? Catch the style here. square root of 200, you get 10 root 2. See there? 
he is staying the road too. So that's how we show them. So you can put that in a calculator and as I said, the square root of 200 is 10 root 2. And that is E. Now again, the only thing that I would say is probably right here, so the square both sides would probably catch some of us, but always remember square cancel square root. So that's no issue. And that allows us to do that now. Now this question here says calculate the value of x for which p equal q. If a vector p is equal to vector q, if vector p is equal to vector q, right? Now this one, this one is worded a little off. They're saying find x for which p is equal to q. All right, now, if two vectors are equal, then their x components are equal and their y components are equal. So this one is already off, if you follow what I'm saying. All right, so this one right here, there's some technical wording. They should have said, I don't know, something different, but this is not, vector p cannot be equal to vector q. So the wording is off, we're going to put a, slash right here, all right, ignore that one. It says calculate the values of x for which p and q have equal magnitude. Now this is, this is possible. Now the second one is saying find the value of x for which the magnitude of p is equal to the magnitude of q. That is something that we can do. If their magnitudes are the same, then now we know that the magnitude of p would be eight square plus one square, square rooted, and that must be equal to the magnitude of Q, which is a square root of seven square plus X square. Now we can dash rid of the square root. And so what we're gonna end up get is eight square plus one is 65. And then that's equal to 49 plus X square. So clearly looking at it, you might be able to just look at it as the X must be four, right? You might say, oh, I know that because I know that 49 plus 16 equals 65. But what are gonna give me 16? No, four square, 49 plus four square. So I know that X is four. So I get to this part and I can tell them. So X is equal to four. That's for the second one right here. All right, now, as I said, vector P can equal to vector Q. Two vectors are equal if their corresponding elements are equal. So this part don't make no sense, something else is off. Something else should have been there. Now the final one says, express RP and RS in their simplest form. RP. Now look at this, they give you vector PR. So if you want vector RP, RP, you have to remember, is the opposite direction. So RP is equal to negative PR. RP is negative PR. That is going to be vector RP, negative PR. Negative PR in vector form going to be, this is minus B to B. Then now this is, and the vector PS is, no, they need vector RS, all right? No, we need vector RS. So now to find vector RS, all right? I'm going to look at vector P as like my origin vector. So vector RS is PS minus PR. Vector RS is PS minus PR. All right, because it's vector of the last S minus R, vector PS minus vector PR. Now we know what is vector PS. Vector PS is 3B, B plus one. That's vector PS and then we minus vector PR. Vector PR is B minus 2B, B minus 2B. So we'll work this out now. 
what we're gonna get. Well, is this vector PR? Vector P, oh yes, there's vector PR. B minus two B. So three B minus B is B. And then B plus one minus minus two B minus and minus become plus. So it's two B plus B. This becomes three B plus one. So three B minus B is two B. And then down there so is three B plus one. This is not a six, this is a B. That's vector Rx. Now let's say find the values of B if the magnitude of PR is 20. So now the first thing you need to see so is boom bang, write down the expression for vector PR. Remember that vector PR, right? Vector PR is equal to B minus 2B. That's vector PR. And then now if they tell you that the magnitude of PR, if them tell us that this magnitude is equal to what them say, them say it's equal to 20, then what we do know then is B square plus 2B square. We know that so this, the square root of that is equal to 20. Yeah, man. So if you square both sides now, if you square both sides, you're gonna get b squared plus 4b squared, you're gonna end up get this equal to 20. And if you get this equal to 20, b squared plus 4b squared is 5b squared. And so 5b squared would be equal to 20. You divide both sides by five to get b squared is equal to 20 divided by five is four. When you get b squared equal to four, you can square root both sides now to get b is equal to the square root of four and the square root of four is two. So b equal two or you might say b equal negative two because when you square root four, you get two answer. So that's the values of b, b can equal two or negative two, all right? So right here, so we get b equal two or b equal to negative two. Of course, I'm a advocate of um, showing you on the graph. So I'm gonna show you now on the graph right here, so. All right, so I'm gonna show you on the graph right here, so. Remember this was vector PR, vector PR was equal to B minus 2B, B minus 2B, right? And if you put in B as two, if B is two, that means we're saying that vector PR in reality, if you put in the two, we're saying that vector PR is, if you put in two, we're gonna write two minus four, or, if you put in the if you put in the b as negative two, we're gonna say negative two, and this would be then be positive four. So we're gonna do it both ways. Let's start with the first way of plotting minus two four. If we plot minus two four, that would be vector pr, and if we plot two minus four. So these are the two possible ways it can be. Look at this now. If I measure this length, you're supposed to get root 20, 4.47. And if you don't believe me that's root 20, I'm gonna actually show you on the screen right here. Look at this, the root of 20 is 4.47. That's all we'll get right there, so see there? 4.47. So indeed, of course, B have to be two or negative two in order for the length of the line to be root 20. All right, nice. All right, so this question here, it says in the Venn diagram, in the diagram, OA is equal to 2A and OB is 3A minus 2B and OC is 5A minus 6B. 
express in terms of A and B, A, B. So to find vector A, B, I think I can write it right here. So since the space kind of cloudy there, vector A, B, remember, is equal to vector of the last minus vector of the first. So it's going to be O, B minus O, A. That's how you'd find vector A, B. But look at this. Um, I know I don't write this code. This is a minus sign. I'm going to fix up the minus sign. Put the minus in there. O, B minus O, A. But then what is OB? It tells us that OB is 3A minus 2B. So it's going to be in bracket 3A minus 2B. Close the bracket minus OA. But what is vector OA? 2A. So when you, when you look at it now, 3A minus 2A, 3A minus 2A, that's just A. So you end up get just A minus 2B. That's vector AB. So to write the answer right here, so vector a, b is equal to a minus 2b. Now the next one, we want vector b, c. To find vector b, c, vector b, c is equal to o, c minus o, b. But o, c is what? What is vector o, c? o, c is 5a minus 6b minus vector b and b is 3a minus 2b. So when you have a look at it now, you realize that vector b, c is going to be equal to 5a minus 3a is 2a minus minus 6b minus minus 2b that look like minus and minus become plus so that become minus 4b. So that's vector b, c. Vector B, C is 2A minus 4B. So let's put on a vector sign, put on a vector, put on a vector. So in other words, vector B, C is 2A minus 4B. Now it says, what do, what do answers A tell you about the points A, B, and C? Now, if you're to look closely at vector A, B, and vector B, C, You'd realize if you multiply vector a, b times two, you'd end up get two times in bracket a minus two b, which works out to be two a minus four b. But two a minus four b is what? Yes, vector b, c. So what is that telling us? Since a, b is parallel to b, c, right? Because two of a, b is b, c then it's telling us that they're parallel and they have a common point B. So it is telling us that they are collinear. That means that they're collinear. So write here, so because 2AB is equal to BC, they're collinear. That means the line a straight line. If you draw a line from C to A, it would pass through B. I know the diagram is not drawn to scale, so it's not gonna look that way, but in reality, B is supposed to, it's supposed to pass a straight line or pass through C, B, and A. So it end up say A, B, and C are in a straight line. That's what it tell us right here. A, B, and C are in a straight line. And the reason for that is because they are collinear. Why are they collinear? They are collinear. Here are the reasons they are collinear because number one, AB is parallel, the slash them in parallel, AB is parallel to BC, right? They are parallel because two of AB is equal to BC and two, they have a common point. They have a common point to B. So end up say so they are collinear, all right? So that's collinear. Nice and easy. Let's have a look at number two. Number two says O, A, B, C is a parallelogram and D is the midpoint of C, B. D is the midpoint of C, B. It tells us that H is the midpoint of O, D. It says O, E is two, two over three times O, C. And it says O, A is A. So OA is A, so to go from O to A right here, so this is A up here. Let me write that a little bit better. This is A. And then they tell us that to go from O to C, O to C is 
C. So now, remember OE, by the way, OE is two thirds of OC. So really and truly over here, so it's two thirds of C, that's OE, and EC is just one third of C. But the whole distance is C. Now they say write down what is OD. Write down what is OD. To go from O to D, D, we need to go from O to D. What we can do is go from O to C, then from C to D. Yeah, man, to go from O to D, we can go from O to C. I think I need a little bit more space to write it up. I'm just gonna carry it on the white sheet right here. To go from O to C, we are saying that it can go from O, I'm writing the wrong thing, to go from O to D. To go from O to D, you can go from O to C, and then you go from C to D. But OC, remember, is C. OC is C. OC is C. Now we need to go from C to D, but have a look right here. To go from C to D, right? C, D, to go from C to D, but D is the midpoint. D is the midpoint. D is the midpoint of what? C, D. So that means that C, D is a half of C, B. So we can write that right here, that C, D is a half of C, B, right? But look at this now, C, B is what? CB is parallel. CB, to go from C to B right here, it's a parallelogram. So CB of a parallel to OA. So CB is A. So finally, we the end up telling them is that OD is equal to C plus a half of A. It's C plus a half of A. That is OD. C plus a half of A. So to write that here, so CD is C plus a half A. Half of A, one over two times A. Now we need vector AE. Vector AE, let's look at how we can go from A to E. So to go from A to E now, let's have a look at the diagram. We they write here to a point A, so we're there at the game shop and we want to go to E right here. So to go from A to E, we can go from A to O, then from O to E. Yeah, man, that easy. So all I have to do to go from A to E is to go from A to O and then go from O to E. Yeah, man. So I'll go from the game shop to a house if you want to think of it that way. All right. And so to go from game shop, we we'll have to reach this point first. So, but going from O to A is A. So to go from A to O is negative A. All right, to go from A to O is negative A. Then OE, remember OE is two thirds of C. That's gonna be two over three times C. That is going to be vector AE. So this is vector OD and this is vector AE. All right, we're not, we're really not doing nothing yet still. Right, we're just having fun. And then right here, so now we need to find vector HE. To go from H to E, to go from H to E, you can go from H to O, and then from O to E. That's how you can go from H to E. Or if you're crazy, you can go from H to D, and from D to C, then from C to E. That's too much work. Let's go from H to O, then O to E. So to go from H to E, we're going to tell them, so I'll go from H to O. We're going from H to O. Going from H to O, and then we're going from O to E. So H, O plus O, E. All right. But if you want to rewrite this, this is really saying that we're, it's really O, E minus O, H. Let's look at this. H to O is minus O to H. So this would be minus O H. So it's O E minus O H. Why did I write it like that? Because I know that O E is two over three C. 
And then H is the midpoint of OD. H is the midpoint of OD. So all I need now is since I already have OD up here, then it's going to be minus a half of OD. Minus a half of vector OD. So to finally write it out, we can write so H E is two over three times C minus a half of OD, but OD is all of that right there. So that is minus a half of, this is now C plus a half A. Nice. So then now we'll just do little maths now, no? do little maths, do little maths, do little maths. That's two over three of C minus a half of C and then minus and minus is minus, so that's minus a quarter of A. Now, of course, they need to simplify your answer because if you look at this now, let me just split the page. If you look at this right here, so you have two over three C minus one over three. Two over three minus one over three is one over six. So that become one over six C minus a quarter A. And that is going to be H E. 1 over 6c minus a quarter a. That is going to be vector h e. All right, we're having fun so far, no issues. Now it says show that a e plus 4h, show that h a e is equal to, well, this is a plus. And explains what? Show that a e, I think this plus should be an equal show that a e plus 4 h e i think it should say a e equal 4 h e so we look at that we already have a e and we have h e so show that a e is four times h e so let's go back to what we have now so this is a e this is a e and this is h e we need to show that a e is four times four times h e that's a e so we need to show that A E is four times H E. So first thing, let's write down about A E. So we'll stay so now our vector A E. And we'll say that vector A E is minus A minus A plus two over three times C. That's what, that's what we have for vector A E. A E is minus A plus two over three times C. And then if you write down what is vector H E, right? Vector H E is, I'm gonna start with the minus A part. It's minus a quarter A plus one over six C. This is equal to minus a quarter A plus one over six times C. And this says show that A E is four times H E. So if I multiply this by four, I would end up say that four H E is equal to, I multiply H E times four, four times minus a quarter, that's minus A, then four times one over six, that would be plus four over six. But guess what? Four over six is two over three. So this works out to be minus A plus two over three times vector C, of course. But guess what, guess what? That is A, E, yeah, man. So four H, E is actually working out to be equal to vector A, E. So that is easy to prove. That's all we need to prove. Okay, nice. So to the first part of the proof, I'll prove that. We'll see that this is true. So this is true. Then now they say, Explain what this proves about A, H, and E. Now, what that proves is, as I said, it's collinear. So since, since A, E is equal to four times H, E, I'm gonna explain what it means. This means that A, E, and H, E are parallel and AE is four times the distance of 
four times the distance of H E. Also, these two vectors have a common point. They have a common point of E. So that means that means that E lies E lies on the line from E to H. Or let's not put it that way. That means that all three points lie in a straight line. Hence, they are, hence, we write that A, H, and E are collinear. That's what this means. Now, I'm just going to give like a diagrammatic representation of what I mean. Let's say a burum, this line, right? It tells us that A, E, see A here, probably A the down here, so. All right, we're just having a look. And then probably A, A. E is somewhere up here, so. Now, AE is four times HE, so H probably is somewhere like right here, so. But what we know is, is this length HE, yeah, you see that little length the HE, we know is, this is a quarter of the whole journey, right? So you have another length here, I would make another point there and another point here. And all of them distance are equal, right? Let's say this is distance is T, this is T, this is T, this is T. Then we just know to see it, eh? H, E, T, and it's a quarter of the whole thing, A, E, but A to H or A to E or H to E, all of them lie on a straight line, right? That's all this means. That's all collinear means, right? So once you get that, one vector is a multiple of the next, and then they share a common point, then the vectors are said to be collinear. All right, this question right here, it gives us another parallelogram, and it tells us say W, X, and Y, V is a parallelogram in which V, Y equal A, so VY, I'm going to put VY up on the diagram. This is V to Y. And me tell us this is A. Let me tell us V to W. V to W up here, so. Let me tell us this is B. Then now, let me say, find vector W, Y. To go from W to Y, you can use V as a position vector, all right? To go from W to Y, it's really, well, some people that say it is WV plus VY, right? Let's say you're more inclined to writing it that way. You said that it's um, the space too small here, so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this. Oh, sorry. I'm just gonna copy this statement and take it to the whiteboard, all right? I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna do it on the white. So coming around here, so now, we'll stay so now and you don't look too proper here. So I'm just gonna close out this. Remember, I say it's a parallelogram and look back at the question and tell us say we need W, Y. All right, so since we need W, Y, to go from W to Y, you can use V as a double, as a position vector. So it would be VY minus VW. It's VY minus VW. That's why you go from V to Y. Now, some persons might be inclined to say it is going from W to V plus from V to Y. That's the same thing as what I said, all right? It's the same thing. So if you prefer to write it as V, W to V, then V to Y, that's the same thing. I'm just using V as a position vector. I'm using V as my O. I'm using V as my O, my origin. All right? That's what I'm pretty much doing. Because we know this would be OY minus OW. 
So then VY, remember, we know that VY is, this is VY A and this is VW B. So it's A minus B. So this equal to A minus B. All right. So you can actually put this on to, this is A minus B. Now the next thing we need is WS. To go from W to S, W to S, right? To go from W to S, we're still on WY, but this is what? They're telling us that WS is in a ratio with WY, one to, one to two. So what they're telling us is if this is a distance T, right? Then you have somewhere else, right? So it's also T, but it is just one third. WS is just one third of the whole line, WY. So let's write that down. WS now is one third of WY. WS is one third of WY. But we already know WY. Yeah, man, we just have all fun in our WY is just A minus B. So this is going to be one third of the vector A minus B. Yeah, man, just look back at it. Look back at it one more time. This is WY and WY. The whole of this is WY. WS is just one third of the whole line. Then let's find SX. SX, to go from S to X, we can go from S to W and from W to X. Go do it that way. So now we need SX. To go from S to X, we need to just go from S to W and then go from W to X. W to X. Nice. So now we need what is SW. Now, SW is just minus WS. So, SW would just be minus, instead of writing minus one third this, I'm going to write one third of B minus A. SW is one third of B minus A plus WX. So, now we need to know what is WX. Now, if you're wondering why I said minus of this, that is because if W to S is one third of A minus B, then S to W is negative one times that, but negative one times one third A minus B is going to be B minus A times one third. Yeah, man. Now we need what is W to X. To go from W to S, since it's a parallelogram, we know that W to X is parallel to V to Y, so this is just A. So you're done with easy A. So that means this is just one third B minus A plus A. To simplify it, it's gonna be one third of B. This is now one third of B. Then minus one third of A plus A. You can write that as minus one over three A plus A, but A is really three over three times A. And so in reality, this is simplifying to be one third of B plus, that look like two over three A. All right, easy. That's S to X. All right, nice. Now then, so we need for sure say, R is the midpoint of VW. R is the midpoint of VW. Ah, uh, V, W, V, W. So we'll put one R on it. So we need to just drop on one R somewhere. Maybe R the right here. So maybe I saw R. The name says shows the R, S, and X are collinear. So this is R, S, and X. So this needs to show that all three of these points line a straight line. So if R is the midpoint of W, all right. So go do that somewhere right here. So we need to prove that R, S, and we need to prove, need to prove R, S, and W lie in a straight line. 
this is what we need to prove that's cool in here to prove this pretty much what we need to show is that we need to have two vectors and have a common point so i'm going to use r i'm going to use maybe r to w i will already have s r to x sorry i'm going to use r to x and then we already have sx so i'm going to find what is rx all right so i'm going to find what is rx to go from r to x i can say it is to go from r to x i can say we can go from r to w then from v to w to x i always mispronounce v and w it's so confusing r to w plus w to x so this is going to be as we just say r to w plus v to x now you might ask what is r to w r to w is just it's a half of you might say half half of what look r is the midpoint of vw so to go from r to w is just a half of b that's just a half of b so this is going to be a half of b and then v to x remember v to x we already have done v to x somewhere here did we write on v to x somewhere here w to x sorry we already have w to x somewhere here w to x is here w to x is a so that is just going to be a half b plus a now this is rx and let's write down back what is sx and we're going to compare the two sx is 1 over 3b plus 2 over 3 times a all right now look at this if we were to sum or multiply sx by 3 if we multiply sx by 3 you get 3sx is equal to multiply this equation by 3 you get b plus 2a you write that down yeah man now let's look at rx right here so if we multiply rx by 2 if we multiply rx by 2 we end up get 2rx is equal to 2 times a half that's going to just be b plus 2 times a is 2a now since this happened what we do know is 3sx equal 2 rx so we can conclude 3 sx equal to rs so hence rx is parallel to sx rx is parallel to sx now they also have they also have a common point and that common point is x and so that means hence r s and x are collinear i really hope we're catching the hang of collinear it's really not that bad nice that's that right there so yes they're crawling here and as we just prove it's crawling here because one sx is parallel to rx and two they have a common point x so hence rs and x are crawling here nice now this last one now it told us that the diagram below is not drawn to scale shows triangle jkl it says m and n are points on JK and JL such that JM is one third JK. So what I'm gonna do guys is, if you were to draw a line to represent JK from here so to here so is JK. Now if we stay so boodung bang bang and chop it in three pieces, then they will say JM is one third of JK. So M the somewhere right here so, this is going to be our M, because M is one third of JK. 
Then if you draw a straight line to represent JL, then tell us that JN is one third of JL. So N is somewhere like right here. So, right, so copy and complete showing points M and N, that's what you do. Now you want to find vector JK. To find vector JK, that nice. Remember, vector J to K, it tells us that JM is U. So it's going from J to M is U. If this is U, then this is also U, then this is also U. So to go from J to K is three U. Oh, that nice, see? Then now, we know say so JN is V. So if JN is V, then we know what is JL. Because that means the IRSA is also V and IRSA is also V. So the whole thing are three V. But that not really matter stills. That doesn't matter. So we can put the V here so over here so 2V. Now we want vector MN. To go from vector M to N, let's fix that up now. To go from vector M to N, we can go from M to G, then from G to N. So to go from vector M to N, it's equal to going from M to G, and then we go from J to N. Now going from M to J, going from M to J, remember JM, JM is U. So going from M to J is minus U, or going in the opposite direction, and from J to N is the V. So we can write that MN is equal to V minus U. Nice. Now we need vector KL. No, hmm, vector KL, to go from K to L, right? To go from K to L, we can go from K to J, then from J to L. You can tell them that. So we're telling them that to go from vector K to L, it's going from vector K to J, and they will stop and drink some water, and they will go from J to L. You have to drink some water, yeah, man, drink some water. But KJ is going from K to J is minus 3U. And then going from J to L is 3V. So what I'm going to tell them? What I'm going to tell them is so if we go from K to L is equal to 3V minus 3U. Yeah, man, that's all I tell them. Now, finally, it's a deduce. Did use two geometrical relationships between KL and MN. The first geometrical relationship we can deduce is predis. MN is V minus U. Cool? So if you multiply MN by 3, you're going to see it's a books multiplied by 3. You realize that 3 times this can give you 3 MN. But 3 MN are equal to what? If we stay so and even go a little further, we're gonna realize, realize that is 3u, my 3v, sorry, minus 3u, which is equal to kl. Yeah, man. If you stay so bottom, you realize that 3mn equal kl. So the first relationship realizes that since 3mn is equal to kl, we see we see that mn is parallel to kl that's one that we'll see mn is parallel to kl all right that's the first geometrical relationship the next one is that mn is three times KL. MN is three times KL. All right. So MN is three times the distance KL. So one they're parallel, two, one is three times the size of the other. And that's it. Um, so I really hope this so far we're doing good. We have one more part of this nice vector of the marathon. So this one took care of dealing with collinear vectors. Nice.